They never hold back. They give you the latest in the news. And they play the best throwback songs. And that's about all they're good for. The Hoppy and Super Witch Show. I'm not even sure if we're good for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> all right, call the show. 630-785-510. That is 630-785-2510. And Super Witch has someone who wants to let us know. Ah, uh, yes. Find The Edge on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Of course, we are on The Edge, theedgeonair.com. Uh, just search for The Edge on Air, and you'll find us. So that's facebook.com slash theedgeonair. Twitter, their Twitter handle is at theedgeonair. And Instagram is also at theedgeonair. So make sure you do that to follow all the other shows on here. Uh, and, yeah, that's that's that. All right. I despise sports fans who takes sports so seriously. I hate the sports fans who never played a lick of sports, but they're the Monday morning quarterbacks who speak their mind, even though they really shouldn't Monday be. Monday morning quarterback. I love saying that. That is pretty funny. And I hate the sports fans who take it so seriously that they egg the bus of the San Diego Chargers, and you're the scumbag city known as Oakland. Now yeah. listen. Now what other city but Oakland would do this? I'm That's telling you right now, it's <laughs> actually a scumbag city. Like, people hate on Cleveland or St. Louis or Milwaukee. Those cities are bland. Those cities are boring. Well, most yeah. cities' fans are, are pretty, you know, they're good. They're pretty gangsta. Well, they're good people, you know. I don't, I don't think they would do anything like this. This is totally a Raiders thing. Like, I, I, I wouldn't imagine any other team but Oakland to do something like this. Like, they're the they... most classless thugs ever. Well, and they and pride themselves to... on that at Chargers game when I, I forget the the nickname of them in the Coliseum when they play, but there's a nickname for them. Raiders uh, Nation. Well, maybe Raiders Nation, but there's there's a different. But they Raiders they all dress dog. up like in you know in black and skull things, and they have like props and everything. Oh yeah, let's embrace being dirt bags. Like no other fan base would grab eggs and ag a uh, Chargers team boss. That is so bush league. That is something that's like so 1970s too. Like, like that is so not high like, school. That's definitely not a current thing. <laughs> let's go egg the high school quarterbacks house. Actually, you wouldn't even egg it. You would egg the nerd's house. That's what you are. You're the same dirtbags who are who would smoke weed in high school and eggs and egg people's houses. That's how equivalent <laughs> the Raider fans are. You're the same as that. Or since they were high, they would smoke eggs and throw weed at people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> but same thing, right? I'm just saying, if you take sports that seriously and you get that mad over it, get a hold of yourself. All you're doing is sitting on the couch watching a team. Right. Whether you egg a boss or you scream at the TV or you have angry tweets at the athletes, that's not going to help them improve their performance whatsoever. So you might as well shut the hell up, sit down, and get a hold right. of Right. Well, and everything that, that you think is going on with your team probably isn't going on. There's probably a whole other bunch of stuff that you'll never know that's going on. Like what? Team. Well, I don't know. Like for instance, like the Bears or something like like Bounty Gate. Yeah, like Bounty Gate. That's a good example. That's the best Hotel example you can find. Yeah, get some girls over. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, the the Raiders fans egged the Chargers bus. This was after Sunday's loss. Uh, the San Diego Chargers team bus was egged by fans. Wait, at so the, did the Raiders lose? The Raiders lost. I believe it was a close game. I think they lost by game. a touchdown. Embrace it. You were close. They should be happy. They haven't had a close game like that since 2008. And uh, <laughs> after you fired your bum of a coach who lost 10 games in a row, what do you expect? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry that your little cutesy money ball athlete didn't uh, make it. I was at Lane Kiffin or whatever his name was. He was uh, uh, an Oakland coach, right? And then he had to go back to college teams because he sucked. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, the Chargers team bus was egged by by uh, Oakland Raiders fans at the ODA. Co Coliseum as it arrived at the facility to drop off players for Sunday's game. So this was before the game happened, even, which makes it even worse uh, against the Raiders. Chargers general manager Tim Telesco was on, or Tom Telesco was on the bus along with a group of San Diego players. According to a team spokesperson, players were surprised by the incident, but otherwise laughed it off. I, I would laugh it off too, dumbasses. Uh, San Diego retweeted a picture of the mess, and you can see it here. You can see. Uh, 
That would be from, from inside oh, the Oh, wow, bus. you got them. You grab some eggs from the local grocery shop, and you egg the team boss, even though they beat you, and even though Rivers is having his best year so far. Oh, you got him. I bet you got Rivers so angry when he got the W, and you guys went home like losers, you Oakland fans. Like, right. seriously, like, John Madden must be, like, just so angry and be like, this is the team I used to coach. Yeah. They're a bunch of dirtbags. This is a team, fan base. you know, it's a team that that has had a pretty storied history too. With Jamarcus Russell, Yippie Kaye, Woo has had some good football. <laughs> Terrell Pryor, yay! Yeah, uh, the, the the Chargers and the Raiders have been longtime AFC West division rivals. There's always are they really rivals? Yeah, because there's like four Charger fans. I'm not saying that the Raiders are good fans, but they're sort of loyal. Where there's a lot of Raider fans, right? But there's they're, not a lot of. They're Chargers loyal fans. in the wrong way, though. I'd rather be a Chargers fan. I actually kind of like the Chargers. They're they're actually one of my favorite teams in the NFL. Um, but um, yeah, they they are AFC West division rivals, um, because they're both in California, which helps, and they're both in the same conference. Of course, man, is that the weirdest place? Is that in Florida, it's like you can't tell if there's fans or not. They're sort of bandwagoners, you know what I mean? Like, Well, yeah, kind of. Uh, there's always an extra edge between the two teams and fan bases that comes with the two teams facing off. Sunday's contest will be Oakland interim head coach Tony Sperano's first chance to lead his team since the Raiders fired former uh, coach Dennis Allen two weeks name? ago. Tony Sperano, where have I heard uh, that? He was the Miami Dolphins head coach. Yes! My guy, I love Tony Sperano. I hope he leads Oakland to victory. That was my guy. I loved seeing him on the sideline like as Chad Haney would just be so mediocre <laughs> and he would just look so angry. Oh, man. Tony Sperano. Yeah, Chad Haney was awful. <laughs> Chad Pennington, that, didn't he play on the, the Dolphins too? He was they on the both Jets, had I think. Chad. Yes. Um, you might as some well. of the people that have been starting quarterbacks, it just it, it boggles my mind. It, it starts right here in Chicago with Brian Greasy and Kyle Orton. They were starting quarterbacks for the Chicago Bears, the charter franchise of the NFL. I mean, what the heck is going on there? I mean, and you just think about it. Like, the amount of quarterbacks that go through the league, like, you have to be lucky to be good. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, and and a lot that. of it doesn't have to do with the quarterback. It has to do with the team How you put around it, a la Josh McCown. Chris Krenzel. No, this is for the Bears. Craig Krenzel. Chad Hutchinson, another Chad. Jonathan Quinn and my guy Rex Grossman. Ill. Next year, Orton Grossman. Well, Grossman was the best out of all those. Todd Collins. Remember that name? I do remember Yuck. Todd Collins. He, in that, like, NFC Championship game, <laughs> was like a – he was like a dead person. Like, he couldn't move. Like, I remember he right. wasn't mobile at all, and he couldn't throw a spiral. For the, uh, the, the worst one, because they wasted a first-round draft pick on him, I believe, was in 2000 when they drafted Cade McNown. Now, I was a little too young to, to care or, or, or notice about that, but my dad said he was just awful. And Shane Matthews. And then you brought in Chris Chandler in 02. <laughs> Pass his prime after he led it's, the— 2003 uh, is when the Bears only won, like, two Cordell, or three games. Cordell, yeah, let's get Cordell Stewart. Cordell Stewart. Who was he basically, was like, the Vince Young of the 90s. Because, like, he had the same, like, you know, 77 touchdowns, 84 interceptions. Like, yeah. he's the Geno— um, it's, it's never good when you have almost as many interceptions as touchdowns, which is— Obvious, but yeah, that, that, that's that's never good. Obviously. So yeah, going back to my point, Tony Sperano is my guy. Well, let's see if he can do anything. So what else does it say? That's it for the article. They they egged the bus and they're stupid. So that that's my closing point about that. All right, and now call the show six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. That is six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. And we have a special guest coming up at three p.m. Just a little bit of a hint. As he is an expert on everything going on with Ebola, and he is going to break it down for us. He's an Eb- so so he's an Ebola expert. Oh geez, yeah, he's a very That's a little smart scary. person. <laughs> At Radio D E X T E R, give him a follow right now. What up, Dexter? Give him a follow. All right, what else is coming up in Super Rich News? All right, so uh, Jersey ad revenue is going to be part of the mix, which is very odd. Uh, if the NBA sells corporate advertising on game jerseys, which may, which many believe is inevitable, network partners Turner and ESPN will get certain spending guarantees related to those contracts, a development that was negotiated as part of the league's massive nine-year, $24 billion media deal. 
Uh, but that's where the clarity ends, because the details of what the networks will receive and from whom remain as unidentified as the league's future policy on selling jersey advertising. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're, like, they're planning why? on putting they're planning on putting ads on the jerseys, uh, which just like make the networks more money. The fact that you have ads everywhere—that's the whole point of idiocracy. The movie that everything becomes like so ad based. It's all about money. Right. I like money. One of the quotes from there. Like, why do you need ads on the NBA jerseys? Because here's the worst part. That's what the WNBA does. Do you want to compare yourself to them? Have a cool little Carfax logo on there. <laughs> Have a little Midas. Like, it's not NASCAR. You know, this is the NBA. Like, y- you don't put ads on the jerseys. Find it just a new wouldn't way look to right. make money. I mean, get the hell out of here. Like, it really wouldn't look right. It would It would take a while to get used to, I, I would think. The one thing. Who is our new uh, commissioner? I say new as if I'm in the NBA. The, uh, <laughs> uh, that would be Adam Silver, right? Yeah. This is the one thing that I will critique Adam Silver on. You're not David Stern. You shouldn't be so money hungry. Yeah, everyone applauded him for the way he dealt with that piece of dirt clipper owner, even though he sort of had to because the media was mad. And he worked alongside David for 20 years <laughs> right. when the whole clipper owner was doing his shenanigans and saying awful things behind the scenes. So what I'm getting at is, is he really that great of a guy? Is he really that great of a commissioner? Well, it's like anybody else who would have been the commissioner would have done the same thing Adam Silver did. So he's not some hero. If he were some hero, he wouldn't be doing this. And Adam Kowalski, KWAL, our other new contributor to the show, had a good point. It's turning into the MLS. Do you want to compare yourself to a sport that no one watches unless you're a soccer geek? And even soccer geeks don't like the MLS because it's a joke. (laughs) That's true. They like the Premier League and other Adam Silver, if for some reason you're listening to the show, don't do this. There's no point, you (laughs) dimwit. Yeah, Adam Silver is listening to it in his office in uh, New York right now or Los Angeles, wherever he's based. So anyway, uh, early parameters indicate a distinction between whether a national brand or a local regional brand buys the sponsorship. A national brand with a popular team would mean more money for the networks than a local regional brand with a team that's not on national TV very often. Um, According to sources uh, involved in the discussions, if there's a national brand with a jersey deal that would have bought time on ESPN or TNT's NBA game telecast, the two networks would get specific commitments from that company to also buy TV advertising. It's very hard to understand, but all I know is that TV is that the networks and TV are getting will get more money for having these ads, these stupid ads. That's the all that matters at the end of the day is making more money. Even though these TV networks make enough money, even though the NBA makes enough money, this shows what happens when you get greedy and you want to make more money. Yeah, you. Go down to the level of the WNBA or the MLS by putting ads on your jerseys. What a gr- what an awful thing! I, I and they're and they're saying it seems inevitable, so it seems like it's going to happen eventually. Um, as part of, so as part of the overall media deal, Turner will be able to sell corporate advertising specifically for All Star Game jerseys, starting with the 2017 All Star Game. So that's when this is all starting, apparently. Uh, as far as when they're going to be testing it out and everything. So it's a little back knowledge. It could happen earlier than that. Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen at all, but yeah. Anything else in your article? Not really. Uh, just uh, says, you know, ESPN will have more flexibility to sell a presenting oh, Of course they will, because all they care about is making more money, even though they're worth billions. So it looks like there's going to be more sponsorships around the NBA draft and Yuck. some of its studio programming, so we can look forward to this that This is as brought well. to you by this and this and this and this. We got it, you greedy douchebags. Coming up, the Hoppy and Super Rich Show. All right, one of my radio mentors is going to call in, tweet at him, at Radio D-E-X-T-E-R. As he will give his take. Actually, not really his take. He's an expert because he's in Cleveland. So he knows everything that's going on with the Ebola crisis. And he will be able to give us opinion. Yeah. And the latest in the news and updates so that we can give our opinion. So call the show. 630-785-2510. That's 630-785-2510. And if you want to know about the upcoming events with The Edge, go to theedgeonair.com slash events dash concerts or click on the events 
Concerts tab. We will be right back on the Hoppy and Super Rich Show here on The Edge. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> The Hockey and Super Rich Show. This is an official broadcast of Hoppy Radio. For more info, check out hoppyradio.com and hoppysworld.com.